Hey yo, what is up? I'm a little bit late to the party. Um, been a little bit busy playing Clan Wars, so not a lot of time spent on uh, making content. But I'm gonna chime in today on the roadmap video, uh, which was released like about a week ago, and uh, you probably already seen some uh, other content creators uh, giving their sharing their thoughts on uh, all the new stuff that's planned to come out uh, with this video. So I'm gonna just go skip ahead and tell you what I think about all the things that are coming out. Starting with, of course, uh, the Japanese tank destroyers that. Uh, are being uh, recommended or no, I mean they're going to be pushed out sometime soon starting with the tier 4 up to tier 10 uh, they're all going to be playing like the uh, Jaegerus uh, they're going to be heavily armored in front with big naval guns uh, in my opinion I think some people are going to enjoy this gameplay uh, and some people will be looking forward to this but i think uh, that group of people is going to be quite small because i don't see a lot of people really interested in uh tank destroyers that much because they're so limited in their gameplay they're not very dynamic they're slow they're cumbersome uh for me they're not very interesting anyway but i know some people will enjoy it but i don't feel like a bunch of people are going to uh you know be super excited about this branch of tanks as you know uh game games nowadays getting shorter and shorter uh with a huge big slow cumbersome tank with slow reload i just don't think a lot of people are going to be that into this kind of gameplay um you know the gameplay is more situated to towards uh Mob high mobility view range camouflage uh you know games if if the game is going to last five minutes you want something fast and agile mobile move around shoot stuff run away uh i don't know if tank destroyers uh with huge naval guns and 15 second reload is going to be uh you know it's going to be interesting for a lot of people but that's my thoughts on the japanese tanks anyway let's move on to the next subject which is random events which is a dynamic uh you know dynamic events that are going to be happening happening in random battles like this one is going to have a ship crash through and then there's going to be buildings falling down there's going to be debris there's going to be containers and whatever that you can use uh, to push around to hide your lower plate uh, this is interesting um, but I don't see this uh, being helpful if you're trying to uh, shoot let's say a tank where the only weak spot is the lower plate and if he's using a container or some kind of debris to protect its lower plate uh, it might be interesting, it might not be interesting, I don't know. If you're playing the E100 and you're doing this, I suppose it's cool. But if you're the guy defending and trying to shoot the E100, it's not going to be so cool. Uh, next up, we're looking at the other dynamic events like, uh, you know, the tide going up and down. Uh, night mode this should have been implemented a long time ago this is a positive move it's going to be good for the game it's going to um, add value to the game in my opinion I think it's going to make something different you know it should have been done a long time ago and I think uh, this is a positive thing that uh, that's going to be uh, useful next the next thing that we'll talk about is Steel Hunter Steel Hunter I don't know about you guys, but I did a survey. I asked you guys what you think about Steel Hunter, and I think there's less than there's less than 10% of my viewers anyway that are actually playing Steel Hunter. I don't think Steel Hunter is interesting at all. I don't think a lot of people want Steel want Steel Hunter in the game. But I think Steel Hunter is an important test bid for Wargaming to test out all their future developments, stuff like they want to implement, like all these landmines and stuff like that. These are This is the game mode where they can test out all the new stuff that they want to add into the game, uh, you know, into random battles. 
and Steel Hunter is a platform for them to do it uh, because it's kind of like fantasy. It's uh, you know a place where they can test out stuff. So this is important for them. But from a player's perspective, I don't think this is very interesting. Why it's not interesting? It's because for me anyway, you can't really be competitive if you have not upgraded your gun. And that is my only problem with this game mode. If, if you're playing PUBG, if you had a pistol and you have not upgraded to a machine gun or a you know, high-powered rifle, sniper, you can still kill people with a pistol. But in Steel Hunter Reborn, you can't do that if you can't kill anyone if you have not upgraded your gun or upgraded your tank so that is my only problem with steel hunter and the next up here is onslaught and again i don't think onslaught a lot of people play this game mode uh in my surveys i think something like 15 percent of you guys play onslaught uh in my opinion i don't think it's fun at all uh it's just a replacement for ranked mode um if they were to give up more prizes, better prizes, it might be interesting, I don't know. But in my opinion, I don't think, um, for me, it's just not interesting at all. The same with, uh, out of all the three modes, the third mode being Frontline. I think Frontline is the best mode out of all this, uh, you know, Steel Hunter, Onslaught and Frontline. I think Frontline by far is the most popular just because you are playing uh, everyone's playing in tier 8s and everyone's making credits so it's a positive thing already just because you 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 have a chance even if you're not having like great fun you're still grinding out a lot of credits in this game mode so in my opinion out of the three frontline is doing the best it's got the most positive response and they've added a third map which is a good thing they should have had five maps by now and uh, they should have have this they should have this mode uh reoccurring more often than you know onslaught or steel hunter combined so in my opinion i think frontline even though it's not like everyone's favorite but it is the most popular out of the three and i think it deserves more respect and more attention and more play time for the players that are participating in frontlines uh, and that's what I think about uh, Frontline. So next news is Vehicle Rebalance. Um, I think a lot of uh, content creators also uh, made this comment. Some tanks are just really need some love. And a lot of tanks uh, that are being nerfed don't seem to need a nerf, but they're going to nerf it anyway, like the Projetos and the French Heavy Tanks. I don't know why they're nerfing these tanks. They don't seem to need a nerf, but they're nerfing it for some reason. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're smoking there in Wargaming headquarters. But, uh, you know, whatever. What It's their game. They're just going to do whatever they want to do anyway. But that's what I think about the rework. Next up, uh, that's what I think about the rework on the tanks. Next up is the crew rework. Now, make no mistake, this is not making your life any easier this is not um the way they're selling it is uh they're making this your life easier by making this crew crew rework thing no they're not making your life easier uh if they want to make your life easier they will leave things alone the way they are what they are doing is making it more complicated um to make you spend more XP and more combat experience or whatever free XP to get your crews more skills. They are going to make your crews, they're going to demand that you spend more on your crews. That's the whole idea of the crew rework. In no way this is going to make uh, your, your, you know, your life easier. This is not making your life easy at all. Yes, some of the layouts are making this improvement where you can look at your crews and they're going to be easier for you to understand. But in no way, adding more crew skills is going to make your life any easier. They just want you to spend more XP 
to get more experience spend your experience on more crew skills uh, next up is this auto cannon thing this auto cannon thing looks like the gun is going to overheat and then you can't shoot anymore and then once it stops overheating you can shoot again so that's the auto cannon uh is it related to the new medium tanks on the british line the wheeled medium tanks i don't know could be yes could be no i don't know but i do like the idea of adding new wheeled medium tanks i think that's going to be interesting um looks like there's going to be some kind of uh a new research tree maybe you need to research wheels instead of 13 inch wheels you can upgrade those wheels up to 22 inch wheels because those wheels give you more protection remember just like the ebrs you shoot the wheels and your shell seems to miraculously bounce off those wheels so there's probably going to be some uh make some research you know you're going to research the radios you're going to research the engine you're going to research the gun you're going to research the turret and then you're going to research wheels as well and that's what i think anyway but that's all i have for you today thanks for watching and i uh, hope you got some useful information i'll see you 